Yes, welcome. It's the month of May, and as usual on this show, the month of May, regardless of anything else we've talked about, fun, entertainment, in the month of May, we focus exclusively on politics because May 29th is our Democracy Day. Now, I start this whole May having a one-on-one -on -one with someone who I know, of course, I don't bring anybody I don't know, but someone we've followed a lot in the world of activism and law. And this person is from the southeastern part of Nigeria, I'm giving you clues. And this person was one of those that defended Ken Sarawiwa in those days. And this person is very vocal. He's also good looking. I'll take a short break and I return with my guest, Tun Seriously Speaking, one on one today on politics and the state of the nation, if you don't go away. So, welcome back. Right, the thing about this show is I don't know what we talk about behind the scenes. I was just talking with my guest, and he tells me that actually his birthday is on the 29th of May, Democracy Day. Now I understand why he kind of feeds the perspective and speaks very actively on developing nations, Nigeria in particular. And it's my pleasure to welcome a one-time president of the Nigerian Bar Association, but no more for his erudite abilities in the world of social activism, Olisa Agbakugwa, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Thank you. It's nice to have you, sir. Pleasure. I say yeah. you're looking good. I describe you as good looking. Is well, that you? I, I, I claim it. It's a matter of choice. Uh, no, I claim or it. Or is it beauty is in the eye of the beholder? Uh, no, I'm beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you like it or not. Yeah. But before I go into, um, well, I would like to start from the activism in you. Is it your profession or it's your, is it nature or nurture? Both. It's in the family and my career. And I might tell you that I was a Biafran soldier, a boy soldier at 13. I was detained by Ojuku at Ontweke in Olo. Mm -hmm. And I had a guy in detention who died, you know, right on me on the mat. At 13? Yep, yep, yep. So it came very early. So it was clear. So now, as you look at Nigeria today, um, what bothers you the most? Because a lot of people say, as we work towards 2019, we're it's a field country. a more divided nation no, than It's ever. a field country. That's what bothers me. How do you define a field country? A field country is where the government is unable to protect lives and property. So then in the Northeast, it's lost. Benue, Taraba, Adamawa, parts of the Southeast, kidnapping. I'm, af I'm afraid to go home because I can be kidnapped. And home would be? And there's an, home is on nature. And there's an index issued by the international uh, body of failed nations. And Nigeria is at the bottom last, just above Somalia. Can you imagine that? Somalia. So we are described as a nation in low-grade civil war. Because look at yesterday in Abuja, shooting in Maitama the so-called uh, headquarters of government. Anything can happen. As we're talking now, they can tell you, oh, someone senior, uh, senior in government has been killed. So would you say, I mean, I want to go back now to the last elections, 2015. Yep. Have we moved one step or two steps back? Ten. Ten, we're more divided. Would we have gone further if we hadn't changed? If we hadn't changed? Yes. I mean, changed the government? Yes, absolutely. That's, that's so hypothetical. But what, what I know is that we are so divided right now. We are so riven. Never in the history of Nigeria since 1960 has this nation been so crippled by ethnicity, religion, and all of these issues, and bad politicians. Bad politicians? Yeah, yeah, politicians. But I wonder, with the experience that you have, yeah. considering the fact that you've experienced in Nigeria that almost divided, even temporarily, you've been a lawyer, you've been a social activist, you've always fought on the other side. Yes. How come you never went into politics? Active politics. Because election. I can't play it, period. I know. I, I don't kid myself that I can play this type of politics. Somebody once asked me, if you were running for, gov say, governor of Anambra, phone call, someone is carrying your votes and running away, would you order that person be shot dead? So I don't want to go where I cannot play. I can influence, I'm an influencer. I can talk to society, mobilize opinion, teach, advocate, I'm best there. How far will the mobilization and teaching have gotten you? Plenty. Mm -hmm. you will, you'll be shocked, 2019. You'll be shocked. I'm the leader of the national intervention movement, mm -hmm. the third force. The we, third force? Yes. Because it's still like, it's just up in the air. There have not been any articulated... No, because you're not seeing it. You've got to go to social media. I was just talking to Showere now. We'll be we meeting up shortly. He's running for president. Mm -hmm. So there are so many political movements. 
and these movements are going to find space in the social media. There are two kinds of voters. The ones that the political godfathers can reach with 2020 Naira, and the ones that they cannot reach because the social media is speaking to them. There are 35 million youths, angry, unemployed, and ready to blow this nation apart. If anything goes, if anything goes wrong. Those guys are not going to be voting for the status quo. They're not going to be voting for PDP or... It Whatever is, party. They're not going to be voting for the regular status quo crooks. They're going to look for new parties. I see the SDP emerging. Not sure how far it will go. In the Southwest, I see the AD becoming a regional party. In the Southeast, I see Abga growing to take at least Imo State. So the ability of the current political actors to dominate the space is gone for good. So in, in essence, one would say that Nigeria did vote for change in 2015. Nigeria did vote for change, but we didn't get the change. Mm -hmm. We didn't get the change. The Sijentan was a bad man. I voted for him, not because I thought he did anything good, but because I knew the antecedents of President Buhari, mm -hmm. having been long in the history of human rights. Mm -hmm. And that if he were to bring that history, into 2015. <laughs> Even though he was elected. He was elected. In a, in a democracy. I he, mean. Was, he wasn't elected. It was a default election. Mm -hmm. People did, were fed up of PDP. And so they had no choice but to go to the APC. And the APC had a very smart uh, strategy Strategy in the person of I don't, Bola <laughs> uh -huh. don't forget that uh, uh, um, President Buhari had tried three times and failed. But Tinubu had the strategy of the social media, one, and then modernizing President Buhari out of his Muslim Daura image, putting him into a making suit, a contemporary making him contemporary cosmopolitan. And you guys, at least not me, those who then You're voted. assuming that I voted that way. Well, OK, you didn't. But you don't my, know if I did. I, no, I'm not sure you did. But my <laughs> wife did. Mm -hmm. We argued in the house, and she said she would. So, all right, fine. But was so, she voting for the person or voting for the... Because that's what I want to take up with you. Do Nigerians vote for who is there, or do they vote for a party? Or do they even vote at all? They generally don't vote at all. Just low, 20%. That's number one. Voter party is always there. But when they do vote, they vote sentimentally. So the 2015 vote was sentimental, in the sense that people were up to here with PDP. And they didn't think whether going the other way would be the right thing. They just jumped into the, between the devil and the deep blue sea. They just jumped from one devil to a deep blue sea. And we have got three years of absolute chaos. Absolute chaos. There's no one who can say in Nigeria that he's having a good time or a good life. Nonsense. Everything's not working. Maybe the senators and the, the House of Rep, given the kind of salaries that they earn. The whole lot of them, whether it's from councillor to chairman of the board, all, the whole lot should should just, you know, I, I just pray that this political movement can pull together a strong third party who really have good governance, economic development at the heart of the agenda. So you'll be saying that, for example, having a hundred and something parties is just an overkill and, you know, a diffusion of power and um, opportunities. No, it doesn't matter. Everywhere in the world, you have many parties. In America, you have about 80 parties. But at the end of the day, you have only two strong ones. Mm -hmm. In the UK, the same. So it's basically the same pattern. The difference is over there, the parties at least have an agenda, an ideology. Here, it's chop chop. There's absolutely no ideology, which is why these senators pay themselves 14, grand, 14 million uh, naira a month without caring about Nigerians. So at the end of the day, how do, don't the people get what they deserve, though? Are you one of those that believe that the people get what they deserve? Good question. Uh, you see, the problem why I don't think so is I feel sorry for the complacent, thoroughly abused, dispossessed, ill-informed, uneducated, completely poor, typical voter. The poverty rates are so high that I could take 100,000 Naira, go to my ward and create chaos. Just give five, five naira. It probably be more now. Okay. Because I heard they were giving 15. All right, 20. 10. Okay, whatever. <laughs> but that's the point. Yes. Uh, but you can't do that abroad. Here, you can buy votes so easily. 
people are hungry. So what are the issues? I mean, Ikidiman has given us a fantastic strategy, stomach democracy. Stomach infrastructure. Just bring small, small things, rice and oil and ground nuts and whatever. People are killing themselves. Say, so where do I put my hand? Say, so here, well, they've done it. That's the problem. I'll take a break. And when I return after my break, I'll take you up on the issue of how do we rescue Nigeria from all of this. I mean, believing absolutely that Nigeria needs rescue. I'll be right back. Thank you.